Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, I've got a graphite windmill drawing for you today, but before we get into that, I just quickly want to show you this. This is an ink version of it, exactly the same drawing. And just to let you know that this is also um, a full tutorial over on my Patreon channel. Um, so whether you want to draw this one in ink or whether you want to draw this one in graphite, which we're gonna have a look at in a minute, you've got an option there to choose whichever one you prefer. There's lots of other projects as well over on Patreon, um, ink drawings and graphite drawings, watercolours, mixed media work. If you have a quick look through some of my videos on YouTube, you'll get a really good idea um, of the kind of thing I do over on Patreon. And they're all full real-time lessons for you. There's lots of content over there that you don't actually see on YouTube. These are all just some of the short previews you know, of some of the um, drawing and painting projects that I've got going over there. Okay, so let's take a look at the graphite drawing then. Okay, so I'm starting out using the grid method for this one and I'm working on an A4 piece of paper. It's my usual daily roundy smooth heavyweight paper. Um, it's great for this style of drawing actually. I've been using it for years, highly recommend it. Um, okay, so working with the grid can really take out a lot of headache, you know, of getting all of the angles, all of the perspective, um, getting all of that kind of stuff right. You know, you, when you're working with a grid, you're just following along with the grid squares there, and it's so much easier to match all of the lines, all of the angles in, um, corresponding with the grid that's already on my reference photo. And incidentally, the reference photo for this um, will be over on my Patreon channel as well. There's already a grid placed over it for you. All you have to do is just draw the grid lines out on your piece of paper and then follow along. It's as simple as that. So what could potentially be a very tricky drawing to do freehand um, is made a whole lot easier with the grid method. Um, there's a lot of drawings over on my Patreon channel where I use the grid method. Some of them are freehand, but a lot of the larger projects, the more complicated projects, I often use the grid method. Um, it just keeps everything nice and accurate. And like I say, it's quite simple to follow along with when you're using a reference photo with the grid in front of you. It doesn't matter what size piece of paper you actually use. So for example, if your print off of the reference photo is an A4 size and you've got grid squares that are one inch square all over it, and you might want to work on an A2, for example. As long as you put the same amount of grid squares on your piece of paper that are on the reference photo, you can follow along really easily. It doesn't matter that the grid squares on your A2 piece of paper will be bigger. You know, as long as they correspond with the exact number that you've got on your reference photo, you won't have any problem at all. And another good tip when you're using the grid method is when you're drawing the grid lines out on your piece of paper, use an HB pencil. Don't use anything really hard. You might think that maybe using a 4H or something like that will be a good idea because you won't see the grid lines as you're shading over them or they'll be easier to erase out. It doesn't work like that. What happens is if you're using a very hard pencil to draw the grid lines out, you tend to press a little bit harder so that you can see the graphite lines. But essentially what you're doing is actually embossing the paper. And then when you come to shade over those grid lines, you'll be left with a lighter line where you've embossed the paper, you know, with the H grade pencils. So I always like to stick to something in the middle ground, you know, like an HB or a B or something like that, and use very, very light pressure. You've really got to avoid um, embossing the paper or putting any really hard pencil marks down there because in certain areas of the draw drawing you've got to erase them you know in the sky area and things like that where you've got dark sections of the drawing which are actually darker than the grid lines there's no need to erase them you can just literally draw and shade straight over them but like I say whatever you do whatever pencil you decide to do the grid lines with and I do recommend an HB um, but whatever pencil you use just do not press hard with it because you will be left with marks visible showing through the drawing at the end and you really don't want that. I can remember when I very first started drawing over 30 years ago 
and I didn't even know about the grid method until a couple of years later. I tried it and I didn't like it. I thought it was time consuming and a real hassle. So I didn't use the grid method for years and years and years. And then when I started um, my Patreon channel and I had to come up with a way of get, getting everybody that was following along with these drawings to get the same result with their line drawing. So they're off to a really good start, a really good foundation of a good, strong, accurate line drawing. Um, you know, without tracing or freehand. I thought maybe the grid method will be a good method to introduce so that everybody can draw along and get their line drawings very accurate and then all the shading and all the texturing and the techniques is obviously you know for another video and that takes <laughs> lots and lots and lots of lessons and explanations um, to teach all of that but basically I've, I've been using the grid method more or less full time since I've been on Patreon and everybody can follow along now with all the line drawings and I've noticed a massive improvement in my own drawings with the accuracy of them um, since I've been using the grid method so I'm not even tempted to go back really to freehand drawing I mean I will, well, there's certain things that are just very easy and very quick to draw um, you know where it doesn't really warrant a grid um, to draw them out but there's certain scenes which particularly landscapes and things like that which can be very very complicated very involved and it can be very overwhelming to try and draw them in freehand um, they're doable but it just takes a lot longer when you've got that grid there guiding you along instead of working on a large scale like A4 or A2 or something like that A3 you're literally working one square at a time and when you think about it you know if you've got a one inch square or a two inch square which you're drawing along with following along with from the reference photo how far wrong can you actually go within that small area compared to how far wrong can you go when you're working on an A3 piece of paper or an A4 piece of paper there's lots of potential there to get the placement of things wrong to get the angles wrong whereas with the grid method if you do go wrong you're only going to go wrong within a one inch or a two inch square and it's not that big of a deal so even if your drawings are a little bit out using the grid method they're never going to be that far out that it looks very bad or horrendous or anything like that in fact a lot of the time mistakes are barely noticeable and they're very easy corrected but most of the time you don't actually make them because the grid lines are so helpful that when you're looking at that square and you're seeing maybe a roof line or the side of a wall or something that passes through that square you can see the exact angle of it corresponding with the lines of the grid square so if you've not tried the grid method before I highly recommend it and there's lots of drawing demonstrations over on my patreon channel using the grid method and I guide you through all of the drawings step by step and I'm always on hand um, on Patreon to give help and advice should you ever need. Okay, so we're just about at the end of the drawing now. And as you can see, there's no trace anywhere of the grid left over there. It's all disappeared. And there we go. There's the finished drawing. So I hope you like that one. And if you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll leave links to Patreon in the end screen cards and in the description below. Take care everybody and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.